Good morning. No, 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 no. So what am I saying it like that? Good morning. Hope you guys are well and having a good day. Today is Monday. This week is half term. So that means that there's no children in schools, no teachers, and we could get some work done. I mean, we always get work done, but we can get some real work done within a short space of time when no one's there. Theoretically, we could switch things off, we could move things around, we could do fresh installations, we could probably resolve problems which have been lingering or been problematic for the whole duration of the term, but we couldn't necessarily be able to do anything dramatic because if you like patch things in or patch it for until the end of term, so then therefore we could resolve the problem properly by not disrupting the lesson, not disrupting school time. So yeah, I am making my way to, guess what, a school, two or three schools today. So this job I'm going to at the moment, I'm meeting one of my colleagues and we're going to be decommissioning some Chromebooks, about 150 Chromebooks to be exact. So that's quite time consuming. It's one of these kind of uh, boring jobs, I would say. You have to basically go through all the Chromebooks and try and get the charges out of the trolley, make sure they're charged, look through the Google admin to decommission them, obviously making sure you can get the serial numbers or the MAC addresses to match up. Because on Google, they don't make it easy to remove devices well they do and they don't it's just locating the devices but you have to revoke the license basically so you have chromebooks without license and you have chromebooks with educational license so therefore you can manage the devices but i'm going to show you guys where we start so yeah i'm going to basically pause the video at this point and the next time you're going to see me is with the chromebooks <laughs> Okay, cool. So these are the Chromebooks. We've got about, I don't really know how many we've got here, to be honest. But in total, we're going to be decommissioning 130. So the process of it is quite long-winded. I'll show you an example of the steps. Yeah, like I said, the process of doing this is quite long-winded. So first thing we need to do is get the serial number of the Chromebook, which there's many ways of doing, but there's a shortcut to do it if your Chromebook's already on. Alt and V will bring up the serial number on the top right-hand corner of the Chromebook. I'll show you right here. Yeah, so... Alt and V, we go back there, Alt V, and then at the top, you'll see it. It'll be in little, little ways. Before the log on screen, but you can obviously get it when you log in. Oh, also, you can get it from the back of the machine as well. Yeah, so there's many ways of getting it, but I like this shortcut because this is quicker. And then you go onto the Google portal, and then what you do is decommission it. They'll give you different options. There you go. You've got same model replacement, different model replacement, retiring fleet, Chrome OS upgrade. And obviously you just press yes for factory reset. So we'll select yes for factory reset, and then we'll go with different model replacement. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want the license to be still allocated to the school. We don't want to revoke the license. So so therefore, when we do get another Chromebook, we can allocate that same license to a new Chromebook. Because sometimes if you select the wrong deprovision, then therefore you can lose the license, which obviously we don't want to do. Cool. So let's crack on. All right. So this is kind of like the tedious bit. This is the, the boring bit where therefore I go through the serial numbers. I'm decommissioning these laptops. My colleague's going around to collect them. And yeah, we do have to do this kind of one by one. Is there a quicker way? Not to my knowledge. If there's someone who knows a quick way, let me know. Like you could do multiple decommissions, but because we don't have the paperwork for the serial numbers or anything like that, it's just looking at the serial numbers, typing it in, decommission it, move it across. So yeah. Well, more easy to see this way now. N X H V L E. Okay, cool. As you can see, it's a lot of Chromebooks. Very time consuming, but we're getting there. We're halfway there. Myself and my colleague, we're doing a very, very quick job, putting processes in place to make the job actually quicker so we can get it all and done with, because it's very boring. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's get some more Chromebooks. Yeah, this is about 104. So we need to get a few more to make it 150. Let's keep moving. They're the old ones, yeah? Okay, cool. Those three trays are missing. The trays are missing? No, like the Chromebooks are missing. Oh, the Chromebooks are missing. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're empty. Okay, cool. All right. So these ones are the... That should be 124. 
Robot spoken feedback is ready. Connected to airport. <laughs> Medium signal. Yeah, I want the smaller ones, which, yeah. Which classroom is that one? The one behind. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. They're big. All right, fair enough. So that's it, really. Is there any mouse? Upstairs. There's two classrooms. Two classes upstairs. And the big ones will take. Yeah, the big ones. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Let's keep it moving. Good morning, guys. Hope you guys are well. It's uh, Wednesday. Guess what? Yep, you guessed it. It's another school. Okay. Yeah, so this one, we are just checking some error messages on their server. So I want to see if the hard disk has failed. We got flagged up and notified. So there we're going. All right, so yes, yeah, I arrived at the school where I was getting notifications that one of the hard disks might be failing. So I'm here now just to check. So I've had a quick check to see if there's any lights flashing to indicate fault. I don't see anything at the moment. So what I'm currently checking is the logs. Let me get my tan. It's trying to keep going into the HPE GUI interface. And if I could see any logs to confirm if there's any problems with the uh, smart array. And there is a message which says logic drive. Uncoverable media errors detected on drives during previous rebuild or backup surface analyze scans. Errors will be fixed automatically when the sectors are overwritten backup and restored are recommended. Now, I've already changed the disc. There was a faulty disc originally and I put a new disc in, but clearly something may have happened where, no, nah, I'm wrong. It was working fine because I was able to back up and stuff. So yeah, I need to check the logs and figure this one out. These on-base site servers are gonna be coming to an end. We definitely moving over more and more to cloud-based stuff, cloud-based management. So I'm not even sure if there is a fault with the hard drive, which obviously I'm gonna look into it. I'm not even sure if it's any point repairing it because theoretically I'm trying to move this school onto Microsoft Office 365 in June's autopilot so then therefore we can manage all the devices via the cloud so let's get cracking all right guys hey I am back at the school with the Chromebooks we're just finalizing finishing off we've got new ones now which the leasing companies provided and we're going to join them to the school's Google workspace oh my colleagues How's it going? Love it, working hard. Wow, look at all this. Very nice. And these ones got a stylus. These Chromebooks are, what make are these? The Lenovo's 300E Yoga Chromebooks Generation 4. And it's also got stylus somewhere. Let's have a look for it. Yeah, these are touchscreen as well. Okay, hopefully the kids will look after these as well. Man, the kids will, they will. This is what the third one has a couple of meetings this morning. Okay, guys, so this Lenovo 300 Yoga Chromebook Generation 4. It's very nice. Processor on here is a MediaTek one. It's like a very poor version of a Celeron, but the Chrome OS doesn't need that much um, resources to run. It really requires minimal resources, it's more cloud based. So it's very, very useful for getting children on devices quicker in the sense of like buying more cheaper resources instead of buying like a Windows laptop or maybe a MacBook or even like a tablet, which will always be a couple of hundred quid. These Chromebooks, when you can get them for a decent price, you could access the resources. You could obviously do Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, get access to the internet. A lot of applications for what children need or children access now is online. So gone the days of having CDs and installing software from USB sticks or CD, CD rums. It's my colleague breaking his back, trying to put something in. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. 
Hey guys, hope you're well. What today? It's uh, Friday. Friday feeding. Yay. Okay, cool. So what am I doing at the moment? I'm at another school just having a look at their cabinets. We're going to be upgrading their switches. And uh, the reason why we're doing that is because I think future proof is the wrong word. What they want to do is be able to have a bit more autonomy and control over their network. But to do that, it's normally the best way is getting all the switches on the same manufacturer. And therefore you'll be able to use one dashboard to log in to multiple switches and navigate if you want to create a vlan if you want to control ports so yeah that's what i'm doing at the moment and oh my battery's gonna die so i'll show you what i mean so as you can see these cabs are in great condition that's just me being sarcastic but yeah that's an example of a cabinet which i'm basically looking into to swap the or replace the switches they've got netgear ones which are fine but obviously they're welcome and uh, we're gonna put some meraki ones in nice Okay, this is another classroom where a cabinet is, but we can't see it. Uh, we're still at the same place. I'm basically still looking into the cabinets. So this is the next cabinet. Let me kind of switch it. One switch, I won't find the link into a converter here. Can you see it? And I hate those converters because they're not very good for reporting or giving you an indication that there's a fault with them. That's why I don't like them. Also, don't know if you can hear, here, which is the virgin router, it's making noise, as in the fan or something mechanical is going on with it. It sounds like a fan, really. But also, it could indicate a problem as well. So I will report that to Virgin Media. And what they'll normally do is replace the kit. Some of the schools have old switches, so therefore may not have the GUI interface so you could actually log into the switches and see if there's any faults. So sometimes walking around like this just to see if the fault is any indication on the actual switch itself, like if there's any fault lights on the left hand corner of them to indicate a fault or just like noise you're hearing on the router, which is not very good. Okay, let's keep it moving. No, that doesn't work. That, because my... Okay, so the last and final cab in this school. And there's three cabinets in total, and then you've got like little small switches here and there. There's only three main cabs in the school. So this is the last one in the cupboard. Put some lights on, and I'll show you where it is. Two switches, and you've got, again, another fiber module, fiber converter down there as well. Which again, we're gonna be removing, and we're gonna be using SFPs, which is basically fiber straight into the switches, and then therefore we could monitor what's going on the dashboard. So it's just upgrading all these switches to make it easier to manage and configure and to monitor, basically. Okay, I think I was going to show you, no, I wasn't going to, I think you guys have seen all of that before. So yeah, let's keep it moving.